Today, the team announced it's retiring the logo and name, now widely viewed as a racist slur against Native Americans, saying it's working closely to develop a new name and design approach that will enhance the standing of our proud, tradition-rich franchise. Team owner Dan Snyder had always insisted the name honored Native Americans. The team has been under tremendous pressure for years to change the name, but it was the corporate pressure that recently simply became a deciding factor. FedEx threatened to take its name off the stadium while Nike, Amazon, and Dick's Sporting Goods stopped selling team merchandise. With the recent name change of the Washington Redskins, I think it is interesting to learn about an old NFL team that was actually made up of only Native American players. This NFL team would take care of dogs, drink all the time, and sometimes wrestle bears during the NFL season. This team was the Oorang Indians. The Oorang Indians was a team from 1922 to 1923. In their two seasons of existence, they had a record of 2-6 and six in their first season, finishing 12th place in the league, and a record of 1-10, and 10, finishing 18th place in their second and final season. But this video isn't about the play on the field. It's about the men who made up the team. Plus, there isn't really much footage available from the 1920s anyway. American businessman Walter Lingo had a passion for Airedale Terrier dog breeds and Native American culture. His business, Oorang Dog Kennels, bred Airedale dogs and was located in the small town of LaRue, Ohio, which was once the site of an old Wyandotte Native American tribe's village. As he continued to breed dogs, neighboring farmers started accusing the kennels of breeding a nation of sheep killers because they thought their sheep were being killed by the Airedale dogs. Word about this drama got around the state of Ohio and got the attention of NFL Hall of Famer and Olympic athlete Jim Thorpe. A multi-sport athlete, Thorpe was a lover of dogs and came to LaRue to testify on behalf of Walter Lingo and told a story about how he once knew an Oorang Airedale dog that saved a six-year-old girl from being trampled by a bull. From that point on, Thorpe and Lingo would become friends and would go on hunting trips together. One day in 1921, Lingo invited Thorpe and his football teammate Pete Kallick to his plantation to hunt for a possum. On the trip, Lingo explained to the two football players his idea to advertise for his dog kennel business. He would purchase a franchise from the newly formed National Football League and use it to advertise his dog kennels. He wanted to employ Jim Thorpe as the player coach of the team, where he would be paid $500 a week to coach, play, and manage the Oorang dog kennels. Oh yeah, the idea behind this team was to travel across the country to some of its biggest cities and try to sell the Airedale dogs, while playing football against other NFL teams. Lingo also wanted the team to be made up of only Native American players that would play football and take care of the dogs. Jim Thorpe, who dominated the Ohio Football League in the 1910s, could no longer lead on the Canton Bulldogs who moved on to a broader football league and decided to accept the offer from his friend. Soon after, Walter Lingo traveled to Canton, Ohio to purchase an NFL franchise, which was easy because one of his dogs sold for $150 and the team only cost $100. No, the, it's for the mayor. It'd be a sign of disrespect to the sheik if the mayor didn't take it. It's for you, mayor. What are you doing? What, Carl, what the f***? What is this? He named his franchise the Oorang Indians after his dog kennels and because he felt that it would attract sports fans and dog enthusiasts. He made the team colors burgundy, gold, and white, and with that, Jim Thorpe went to work to build the team. To form the team, Thorpe held tryouts in neighboring town Marion, Ohio, because even though LaRue was the team's home, the town did not have a football field. Native Americans from all across the U.S. traveled to Ohio to try out for the team. Many were from Jim Thorpe's alma mater, Carlisle Indian School, and several candidates had not played football in years and were even older than 40 years old. Most of the players that were selected for the team were not full-blooded Native Americans, but did have some Native American ancestry in their blood. The team consisted of members from different Native American tribes, including the Cherokee, Mohawk, Chippewa, Blackfeet, Winnebago, Mission, Caddo, Sac and Fox, Seneca, Penobscot, Pomo, Mohican, and Wyandotte. Although the team was made up of many players, some names really stood out more than the others like Nick, Long Time Sleep Lassa, Joe, Little Twig Johnson, Samuel Big Bear, War Eagle, and Philip Woodchuck Velmas. Life for the Oorang Indians was slightly different than it is for modern day NFL players. 
The team practiced every day, but the amount of practice time depended on how much work they had to maintain the dog kennels. Training for football games was the team's secondary priority because the players had to first train dogs, build dog crates, and ship dogs inside the crates to different parts of the country. Fortunately, with all the manual labor the players were doing, working at the kennels kept them in good physical condition. In terms of actual games, the Oorang Indians had very few scripted plays like the modern NFL and mostly relied on plays made up on the spot which is evident in their poor all-time record. Much of the team's on-field struggles can be attributed to their coach, Jim Thorpe, who although was a great player, had trouble maintaining discipline among his teammates. But the reason fans came to Oorang Indian games was not for the football, but rather for the pregame and halftime shows. As the team traveled from city to city, they became known for their entertaining pregame and halftime activities. These shows were put on by the Oorang Indian players and the Airedale dogs that they took care of for the purpose of advertising the Oorang dog kennels. Shows included dogs performing a variety of tricks, traditional Native American dances, shooting exhibitions with the dogs retrieving the targets, and also tomahawk and knife throwing demonstrations. Thorpe himself was known to go to midfield and dropkick footballs through the uprights for the crowd's enjoyment. On occasion, Longtime Sleep would even wrestle a bear. The team's travel schedule was grueling at the time, but Walter Lingo insisted that his players receive the best care so the same trainers and dietitians for the dogs also took care of the team members. When the players did find some free time, they spent most of it partying and drinking in different cities. One instance in Chicago, a few Oorang Indian players were in a bar and were denied drinks by the bartender because under a specific Illinois state law, alcohol was not allowed to be served after 2 a.m. This angered the players, so they grabbed the bartender and stuffed him in a telephone pole and flipped him upside down. Another instance in St. Louis, after a night of drinking, the players decided to head back to their hotel for the night. Outside the bar, they found a trolley car that was facing the opposite direction of where they were going, but that was really no problem for them. The players lifted the trolley and placed it back on the track to face the other direction and told the conductor the address of their destination. They lifted a whole trolley car. Wow. Although the team had initial success, the novelty of the shows wore off and the games were getting fewer fan attendance. Seeing this, Walter Lingo pulled his financial backing of the team and it folded after the 1923 NFL season. Even though the Oorang Indians team only lasted a couple seasons, it did leave a bit of a legacy. The team was actually the first NFL franchise to hold a regular training camp, which became common among the NFL and now is something every team does. Also, Jim Thorpe and fellow Indians teammate Joe Guyon were charter members of the NFL Hall of Fame. To this day, LaRue, Ohio is still the smallest town to ever be home to an NFL franchise, even though the team only played one home game and it was in the neighboring town of Marion, Ohio. In 1997, the team's 75th anniversary, the Marion County Historical Society erected an Ohio historic marker on the site where the team's practice field was in LaRue. As for Walter Lingo, he tried to create a basketball team in the late 1920s with the same Oorang Indians name and have Jim Thorpe to be the star player. Sadly, there isn't much documented information on the team, so not much is known. His dog kennel business thrived until 1929, where it was impacted by the Great Depression, but lasted until 1969, which was the year of his death. And that is the story of Walter Lingo, Jim Thorpe, and the Oorang Indians the NFL's all-Native American football team.